And good evening. Welcome to the Highline Activity Center. It is another edition of Coach's Corner here on the Highline Activity Network. And uh, what's actually going to be kind of a bustling hack lobby. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Last week it was a team dinner. This week we've got art uh, around here. But we'll talk more about that coming up a little later on. But right now we're going to kick the show off. And Alex Quist, speaking of team dinner, it was the boys basketball team dinner last week. Yeah. Joining us here. Coach, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? Well, fantastic. Kind of an odd week for you guys. Nothing until Friday hopefully. Uh, I know pending weather is supposed to uh, rear its ugly head here on Friday, but let's step back uh, last week, a couple of games with Wapton and North, two very different types of games. Uh, that Wapton game, and I think I mentioned it too, you always seem to have fun games when you play Wapton, win, lose, or draw. Uh, but that was another one of those games. Uh, just your thoughts on, on the Wapton game last Thursday. Well, you know, obviously if you watched it, it was a disappointing way to lose, but um, we we have a lot of good takeaways to to bring back after that game. So, um, you know, we we really struggled to score the ball in the second half. Um, I think our defense was actually consistent throughout the entire game, but Wapaton just got really hot and they started knocking down some tough shots in the second half. And so, you know, offensively, we were taking pretty similar shots in the first and second half, but shots stopped falling, and so. Um, that's where we just need to mature a little bit and understand that, okay, if, uh, if we're struggling to score now, we, we don't want to wait until we get a pretty good look. We want to get a good look or a great look, Mm -hmm. right? And a lot of that comes down to getting inside of the paint, getting to the free throw line, easy ones that way, because we, we didn't shoot the ball very well in the second half, but, um, we, I thought for the most part, we did a, did a pretty good job of weathering the storm. Um, you know, they we came out and Wapaton had a big run to start the second half. And, you know, I, I think it was neck and neck within the yeah, first it was. six yeah. minutes of the second half. And so that easily that I mean, they easily could have built a lead on us right out of the gate from that. But we responded pretty well and and fought back. So, um, yeah, disappointing loss. But I was proud of the way that we fought. And uh, our defense was, I, I thought, really good that game. I know they did take a lead, but you guys came back good, uh, I think, taking the lead back uh, later on in the game. And, of course, you talk about the defense, and they had this uh, Caden Hockert was uh, kind of the name that comes to mind. He was hitting the three-pointers in that second half, but he was having hands in his face. Uh, you were you, you were doing everything you could. He just found his way to get open, and that's something we talked about before. You mentioned about this team. They move well without the ball. They get space. They're very active offensively. Is that something you guys saw? You saw what you expected with Wapaton? Yeah, I think so, and I actually think we slowed down what they wanted to do. Um, we, we switched around between playing man and zone plenty uh, to make sure that they didn't get comfortable. And even with, uh, what was it, Hockert? Yeah, Is that what his Caden name Hockert, was? Yeah. Yep. Um, even with the threes that he hit, you know, he banked in his first three of the half, and he hit five during the half, so obviously he got hot there. And um, I'm pretty sure two or three of them came off of scrambles where either, you know, we, we deflected a pass, went for a steal and didn't get it, and then all of a sudden he found his way to get open or an offensive rebound type of scramble situation, kick out three. And those are hard to guard. Right. And so, uh, I mean, and he hit, I think he hit one a couple feet off of the line, three, four feet off the line. And so, um, yeah, they they do a good job moving without the basketball. And that's how basketball works. If, you know, whether it's a bank or not, you see the ball go through the hoop. There's something about it. Sometimes it just gives you a little kick and Mm -hmm. gives you a little bit of confidence. And they, they came out. Guns a blazing right away in the second half. As uh, as we've talked about, I think that's three games now where you, you, it was two possession games. You lose by one or two possessions three times. Is it a case where these guys got to learn how to win those games and, and learn what it what it takes to get over that hump and, and make up those five points? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And we'll, we'll preach the same thing every time we're in a situation like that, a close game where it doesn't matter first half, second half, one possession – you know, two minutes into the game can have an impact on the outcome. And so that's where we're going to do our best to to clean up anything that we can, you know, fixable mistakes. Um, And then on top of that, we know that at the end of a game, things are going to tighten up a little bit, Mm -hmm. right? Uh, The gaps aren't going to be as big. People are probably going to close out a little bit harder down the stretch. And so that means our execution needs to be better once we get down into the last portion of the game. So, um, 
you know, that's, yeah, I mean, if we want to be where we want to be at the end of the year, we need to be able to, to get better playing and finishing out games. And so it's honestly, in my opinion, a good thing that it's played out the way it has because we know it's something we need to work on. It's mm-hmm. stuff that we've watched, we've talked about. Um, and so, you know, if we weren't in that situation to begin with, then, you know, we don't know that we have to work on it. Right. And by the come tournament time comes, you know, we, we want to make sure that we're prepared, mm-hmm. right? It's going to, I just anticipate down the stretch, right? Well, we're probably looking at a play-in game. I'm assuming it's going to be a close game one way or the other, no matter who we're playing. And so that's the game that's the most important, right? We want to be playing our best ball at the end of the year. So uh, finishing out games is something that we want to get better at if we're going to play our best basketball. Well, on Saturday, you went to Shanley for that makeup game. And Shanley seems to always have solid defensive teams. And you saw it again, a great mm-hmm. defensive team uh, for Fargo Shanley. And that was really the biggest difference. You guys played well defensively yourselves, but they just played better. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a team in the past we've struggled to score against. They, um, they're they're athletic and they they've got a little bit of length and uh, they communicate well and they've got pride on defense. So, uh, yeah, there there really weren't very many open looks for us against Shanley. I think we went through just about every one of our sets and we didn't really get much out of them. Um, we had a hard time getting the ball inside of the paint. You know, we had plenty of open looks, but. When the defense makes you uncomfortable, it's a lot harder to knock down open shots, right? When you don't get into that rhythm. So, yeah, hats off to Shanley. They're a very good defensive team, and they didn't let us get into any type of rhythm against them. Well, now you have that week. Uh, As we mentioned, uh, all week until Friday night. Good to just get back in the gym and and now when you get those practices. I know we've talked about it. You love practices. Players like to play, but you you, you like games too. But those practices just kind of, Forget about what happened last week now, and let's look forward to West Fargo Cheyenne. Is it good you have a whole week to get ready for a team like the Mustangs? Um, sometimes yes, sometimes no. It's, you know, I have said in the past, yeah, I, I like having practice uh, definitely more than the boys do. But there, there's there been enough postponements now <laughs> where I think a, a week off, I'm already just like, okay, let's... Let's get to the next game here. Let's get to the next one, see where we're at. But luckily, Tuesday, um, we were able, yesterday, we were able to have a JV game yep. against Horace. So um, got about half of our team playing in that game. And um, varsity practiced in the morning. We got some guys together to come and scrimmage against them, some uh, some older college, uh, older men. Mm-hmm. So um, that was good for them to get up and down a little bit. But um yeah, that's, there's always things to, to clean up and fix, and so uh, we use our practice time to make sure that we're getting better. You expect the same out of West Fargo Cheyenne that you've seen the last couple of years? Um, they're, I mean, they graduated quite a few players, you know, just like any team. They're, they're going to be different year to year. Um, you know, I, I anticipate almost the exact same we've seen in the past as far as what they do on defense. Um, offensively, they're going to run the same stuff, except they've just got different players with different strengths. Mm -hmm. And so that's the same with any team that we're going to go against. Usually, um, most head coaches aren't going to switch up, you know, what they do, Mm -hmm. uh, year to year for the most part. Um, so yeah, uh, we have a pretty good idea for what they're going to do on offense, what they're going to do on defense. Um, and so I think our, our biggest, uh, um, our biggest challenge going into, that game against Cheyenne is are we going to let them speed us up because uh they're they're generally one of the most talented teams in our in our conference and they do a really good job of getting teams to turn it into a track meet okay and uh that's not a team that I necessarily want to get in a track meet against um we still want to take our open looks when we have them especially in transition high percentage stuff but we just need to be disciplined with it because yeah if we start shooting you know, 10 seconds into the shot clock every single possession, and it just starts going up and down. They're used to that type of game. It's their strength. They want to get up and down and and put up a bunch of shots. So we want to slow the pace down a little bit when we can and be disciplined with that. But they'll be a good ball team. And getting rebounds, is that going to be part of helping slowing it down and getting it to your tempo, is getting that defensive rebound and so you can get into your offense? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, uh, you know, just even looking back at, uh, the game against Shanley, our defense was pretty good, but we struggled rebounding. And so when you're struggling to score on offense, 
uh, rebounding is extremely important because then you get some opportunities in transition to maybe find that rhythm a little bit. And so we really weren't able to get in transition against Shanley because, you know, about half of the time Shanley missed, they got their own offensive rebound. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, that, that really helps our offense. But at the same time, looking at it, flipping it around to the other perspective, Cheyenne won't be able to get into as much of a rhythm or the team we're playing if mm -hmm. they're not getting those extra opportunities, extra shots at the rim by getting offensive rebounds. Final question, just going back to that uh, JV game last night against Horace, of course, the new school, they'll be a full-fledged member in the EDC next year. Uh, some good things came out of the game. Uh, you know, Talon Larson, 17 points last night, 13 coming in the first half. Uh, were you pleased to, to see uh, what, you, what you saw with your junior varsity kids last night? Yeah, I think all of the coaches, we were pretty happy with what we saw. Um, outcome didn't turn out the way we wanted. Um, but, I mean, sh they, they shot the lights out. I think they had a kid. I think he scored 35 points. 30. Yep. 30. Eight three-pointers. Yep, eight threes. And so, um, you know, he hit a couple deep ones right away. And then, you know, even after that, I mean, some of them, you know, we got out there on him, and he, and he still made us pay for it. So good basketball player. And so, yeah, I, I was pretty happy w with what they did. They uh, they, they played hard. Mm -hmm. um, I think everybody was active the entire game. Um, defensively, it could have a little bit better. Communication could have been a little bit better. But um, one thing I love about our, our program in general, and this goes for our ninth graders too, um, I've never really had to question uh, how hard the kids are working. And so... Yeah, like I said, that's 9 through 12. We've got a ninth grade team that works their butt off. Mm -hmm. Our JV team, they're going to leave it out on the floor, and, and same with our varsity. And so that's that's always something that I think we can tip our cap on and, and say, okay, we, we don't have to question our work ethic when the ball is thrown up for the jump ball to start the game. We're going to work our butts off. And so JV was no different. They did that. Um, there's always mistakes. That's okay. That's part of basketball. Usually the team who makes the least amount is going to win. Speaking of that ninth grade uh, team, uh, they played tomorrow night against West Fargo mm -hmm. uh, here at the Hack 615, uh, I believe, uh, tip-off time. So you can watch that right here on the Highlander Activity Network. So get a chance to watch the, the ninth graders uh, in action against the Packers here coming up tomorrow night. Well, Coach, appreciate you stopping by as usual. Friday night, uh, but about a uh, the junior varsity, probably around 545, 730 for the varsity tip-off, West Fargo, Cheyenne. Weather permitting, we're going to cross our fingers and hope that that stuff doesn't uh, stays to the north of us so we can get a game in here on Friday night. Coach, thanks for stopping by. We'll talk to you again next week. Yeah, thanks, Paul. We'll talk you, to you later. You bet. That is Coach Alex Quist from the Valley City Highlanders Boys Basketball, and we'll be back with more Coach's Corner here from the Hack here on the Highlander Activity Network. Back here on Coach's Corner from the Highland Activity Center on this Wednesday night. And now we move into wrestling. Head coach Aaron Larson joining us from the Highlander Wrestlers. Coach, how you doing? Doing good. Good. Now we came off the Bismarck, uh, the Rotary. Uh, what, 20, 29 teams, four states here on uh, Friday and Saturday. Uh, a two-dayer. Um, seventh place finish for a team. Overall, your thoughts on the Highlanders? Uh, we wrestled pretty well. Uh yeah, uh, you know, no way other to put it than we wrestled pretty well, and uh, uh, we're able to work our way up into seventh place, and we're two points out of sixth place, I do believe. So it would have been nice to to get ahead of Bismarck Century, but we just came up a little bit short. Now, stop me if you've heard this before. The Griebel brothers both went their uh, <laughs> weight classes again. Colton at 106, Coy at 120, and I think Coy uh, went up against a kid, I want to say from Montana, that was supposed to be a, a pretty good wrestler and, and uh, win, won his match. But I thought there was a match he had against uh, a rather uh, rather good wrestler. Uh, yeah, so the kid in the finals was, uh, I do believe, ranked number one in South Dakota at South 120 Dakota. pounds. And... Uh, Coy was able to get the pin, and uh, so that, so it was a tough opponent, and uh, Coy rose the occasion and, and got the job done. Seven placers, uh, if uh, memory serves. He had seven kids that placed, and, and it was good to see uh, Broden Muskie getting back out on the mat and uh, some guys that had been out for various regions getting them back. Is, is the wrestling room starting to get healthy and starting to get everybody back now? Um, you know, it's been a tough, se tough season for illness, uh, and uh, kids being gone for various reasons. But, you know, our our goal is to just have our best team on the mat come regional tournament time. And, 
And uh, I think we can do that, and I hope we can do it, and that's our goal. Rugby, I believe another two-night uh, tournament this weekend, another Rugby Panthers up there. So what do you, what are you expecting in that tournament this weekend? Uh, it should be a lot of fun. I enjoy uh, – I'm a Class B guy at heart anyway, so I, I enjoy going to uh, uh, small Class B schools, and the, it's a confined area, and it's loud, and Class B fans are passionate. And uh, the nice thing for our kids is we get to see some new and different competition. So um, it's good for our kids. Is Carrington going to be there? Carrington, <laughs> I do not think, is there. So. <laughs> uh, and people that know you know why I, I brought up uh, brought up Carrington. And also the uh, young ladies, uh, Jada, uh, Megan, and uh, Miley, uh, Deegan Miley, all uh, were placers at the Rotary this weekend as well. So it's good to see them and those three eighth graders and how they uh, have improved in what they do this year. Yeah, they're very much part of our team, and uh, uh, they had a lot of passion in their eyes and fire in their eyes this weekend and wrestled hard, and, and you know, they're all basically first-year wrestlers and just eighth graders, and to uh, win some matches and place at the Bismarck Rotary, um, it's very impressive. Well, as the season passes, uh, again, they got the tournament coming up this weekend. I think the next home duel is the end of this month. They'll get a chance to have another uh, home duel, only two more, and, and the uh, home portion of the schedule is done. At, do you say, uh, Coach, I want to be tournament ready at this date or, or, or not? Is there like a, a set duel or a set meet or a set date? You say, we got to be ready by the 1st of February. You know, when I was younger in my coaching career, we tried to win everything. We wanted to peak all the time and yeah. win everything. And, you know, that's not realistic for kids. And uh, so now our goal is to, to peak at the EDC tournament, carry it through the state tournament. And, uh, you know, and we're, we're working towards that. And, you know, we'll be ready. A lot more wrestling to be had before we get to that EDC. So a lot more chances to improve and get better and, uh, and get to that goal. Yeah, you bet. You know, out at the Rotary, we had some kids that uh, – uh, wrestled well. One that I wanted to mention was Espen Kunze at 145 pounds, uh, uh, placed eighth. If you can place at the Rotary, you can definitely place at the state tournament. And, uh, you know, Espen was at 145, and he's actually working his way down to 138. And um, I think once he gets down to 138, that he's going to be a force. I asked uh, Jada if the two of them uh, have a, uh, eh, well, we, we wrestle at home, but it, the, <laughs> I bet that's an interesting combination when those two get together and, 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 and dig, go at it. Definitely an interesting <laughs> dynamic. <laughs> well, Aaron, again, I appreciate you stopping by here uh, on the show, and uh, we look forward to uh, next weekend. But again, rugby this weekend, and, and I guess those two-a-days, those Fridays and Saturdays, you talk about that. There's some team chemistry, too, a lot of bonding that goes on over those two days, isn't there? Yeah, you you bet. You spend a lot of time together, and you stay in a hotel, and kids, you know, enjoy each other's company and have some fun. And um, so, yeah, it's been it's been good, and we have good team chemistry. Uh, these guys got all we have good leaders, and the kids all get along well, and um, it makes the coaches' jobs pretty easy. All right. Well, Coach, again, thanks very much, and good luck this weekend. Appreciate it. You bet. Thanks, Paul. You bet, Coach. Coach Aaron Larson from the Highlander Wrestlers. Again, they'll be in rugby this Friday and Saturday in their next tournament. We'll come back, and a co-host joining us, and we're going to talk speech and art are our next couple of topics coming up, as well as girls' basketball, as we continue with the Coaches Show on the Highlander Activity Network. All right, back here on Coach's Corner on this Wednesday night here at the Highlander Activity Center. And in the hack, as I mentioned, there's uh, some stuff going on next door here in the lobby. We'll talk about that in just a moment. But the first speech meet is coming up. And our, our co-host, we have a co-host this week, Maddie Claybo, joining us. And you've heard her on some of the broadcasts, uh, working uh, junior varsity basketball with me last night in 7th and 8th grade. Now, making her debut on Coach's Corner. How you doing? Doing good. Good. Yeah. Don't be nervous. This is easy. <laughs> this I'm the is one the that's nervous. One. <laughs> this is the scariest one of all. But you have a guest, and we're going to switch it over to our co-host, Maddie Clabo. Maddie, it's all yours. Perfect. Um, I'm Maddie Clabo. I'm a senior at Valley City, and I've uh, been on your earwaves a couple of times over the last couple of days. Uh, I'm here with my head coach and head coach of the speech and student congress teams, Abby Ingstead, uh, who's here to talk a little bit about how uh, the speech team is going to run their first tournament on Saturday. Yeah. So what is kind of the average day during a speech team look like from a coach's perspective? During a t home tournament that I'm running? Yes, okay. during a home tournament that you're running. That's a very different experience, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, there's a huge difference between me going to a tournament and me being in charge of one. 
Um, the average day looks a lot of a lot like just rolling with the punches because it usually devolves into chaos a little bit and then we figure out the schedule again because it's never the same as when we started. <laughs> Once we figure out our schedule again, we roll with it and we just keep on trucking until we're done. But um, basically my job is to know where all the other adults are going to be and know where all of my kids are going to be because the other adults take care of their own children. <laughs> so that's nice. <laughs> um, but uh, basically I am in charge of organizing all of the human beings that run the tournament. And then I work in the tab room during the tournament, which basically is where we do all of our scoring. So we take all the ballots from the different judges that are working on that day and we compile their scores and we figure out after the second round of competition who's moving into finals and we go from there and then we do the same thing to figure out who won. That's the important bit right there, uh, who wins. <laughs> so obviously the speech team has had quite a bit of success in the past and you're a new head coach. So how does that kind of... Um, Sorry, pardon me. How does that kind of energy feel uh, kind of on the backbone of so much success as your head coach? I think I have a little bit less pressure than maybe somebody else who is moving into this program because I have been here for a lot. Like a lot of those wins that we've had, I've been here for. The majority of them I've been here for. So like I have seen the team run really well because Nick Lee is great at, was great at his job and was a great teacher for me. And I while the pressure is definitely there a little bit because nobody wants to lose. It's not fun to lose. I feel very confident that our team has the skills that we need to do to keep being successful. And at the end of the day, whether or not we win or lose is not the most important thing to me. So I don't stress about it too much. Some, some days I have moments where I'm definitely <laughs> like, ah, we have to keep winning. But then I'm like, nope, that's not the important part of this activity. And that's not what my focus needs to be. So I just got to check myself every once in a while. <laughs> that's completely valid. And, you know, speech and debate can be a super daunting thing to get into. I mean, a lot of even from someone who's been in speech and debate, I can still say that sometimes it's a little nerve wracking to do that. So do you have any uh, advice for people that are thinking maybe speech and debate would be a good avenue for them? I think that, um, well, it, it's a known fact that in the United States, adults fear public speaking more than they fear death on average, like whenever they do polling. So obviously the average American adult is terrified of talking in public. And I understand because it still makes me nervous and I coach and I teach people how to talk and I still get nervous talking. So it's, it's obviously something that is very nerve wracking. However, it's a very important skill to have. And um, the more that you can verbally communicate like your wants or your needs or like what you need for staff as a professional or what you need from your students as an educator. Those are all skills that you learn in speech and debate because you learn how to effectively communicate with people and you learn how to regulate your own emotions in order to be able to convey something effectively. And I think that that is something that the average person does struggle with. Like we all get caught up in our emotions sometimes when we're talking and it's super helpful for, especially like kids who are, you know, coming into seventh grade. If you're in speech from seventh to 12th grade, you have five years now of learning how to communicate effectively before you have to go out and be a real adult and a real person. Um, and it's really cool to see how speech and debate will impact people outside of just speech. So like, I often find that when students come into my room, if they're struggling in school, usually they tend to do better. Like as time goes on, they, their grades get better they, because they, can, they write better, they know how to communicate better, they're better at asking for what they need from their teachers, they're better at communication in general. And that, and it, really does carry over into almost every aspect of life. So I feel very fortunate that I get to coach an activity that teaches so many life skills because I learn them as I teach them too. So like every day when I coach you guys, I get better about them too. Absolutely. So we all get to grow together. I love that. What a great <laughs> answer. Um, like I said, you know, speech and debate can be a really daunting experience. And I think a, another perception might be that it's like boring and people are like oh you just go up and you talk in front of a bunch of people and like seventh grade maddie who first joined speech uh kind of thought that and honestly would have been horrified if i had had to do that um so it's kind of nice i don't know if a lot of people know kind of uh what the speech events look like like that there's more than one avenue of competition yeah so there's 14 avenues of competition <laughs> um we have our draw events, which are our limited prep events. And those would be your radio broadcasting, your impromptus, your EPRs, and your extemp. So extemp is pretty political in nature. It, um, 
basically just ask very relevant questions for like society today. Off, most of the time they do revolve around politics. Um, a lot of econ, a lot of foreign affairs stuff. And they have an hour to prep um, an answer to this question and then they have to speak for seven minutes. And that, like, you're like an hour for seven minutes. It's not that hard. But then when you're in the moment and there's an hour to make seven minutes of content, you're like, why did I sign up for this? <laughs> but usually after about the third time, kids are like, oh, this is not hard. Like, I know what I'm doing now. I know how to research now. Like, I'm not going to panic and type on my iPad. I'm going to calmly figure out what I need. <laughs> and usually once they can calm down, things go a little bit more efficiently. Um, impromptu is you have two quotes in front of you. You have seven minutes total to prep and speak. Um, so you'll, you'll flip over the two quotes. Your time will start. And then you pick the quote that you go with. And you have to talk about... Um, you basically just bring up some topic matter and try to create a full speech with structure very quickly um, based off of the quote that you pick. Um, radio is basically exactly what it sounds like. You in, you have a, it's a 30-minute prep. You have um, to pick your news, weather, sports from a packet that is handed out by the North Dakota High School Activities Association every week. And so everybody across the state does the same radio preps. Um, and they have... 30 minutes to cut down that extemporaneous portion that they get, and then they have a commentary that goes along with it, and that's three minutes long. Um, so those are our draw events. Did I forget one? No, I think you got them okay, all. Okay, I think I got them all. And, you know, it's kind of ironic as someone who has now made a foray into radio broadcasting. <laughs> I have never done radio before, so I commend all of my friends that do radio because that is a difficult thing to do. Uh, I've done the other events, but, I mean, you know, talking about how much speech – has like even in those just couple of events there's events that you don't have to write yourself there's events that you you purely write yourself there's acting there's humor there's partner work there's non-partner work radio you don't even have to look at the judge so not to not, yeah not to flex a little bit but like i've been doing this for a long time so i highly recommend that you know we take anybody on the speech team if yeah. there's uh, any person that you think or if you yourself are interested in speech and debate Go for it. Yeah, we have we have events that range from being politically centered to um, very theatrical. So if you like theater, there's something for you. If you like politics, there's something for you. If you are like a super like if you are super into one specific subject, we have events you can write on your own. So like I've had kids write who were like in loved space write informs about solar flares and adore it. I've also seen informs written about kittens. So it is a very wide range of things you can do, and there's a lot of freedom. Um, and it's definitely there's definitely a place for everybody in that in that room. There's not much that we can't find that will make you happy or excited at some level. Absolutely. So just kind of shifting gears a little bit, what are you looking forward the most to this first tournament? I am looking forward to um, our, especially our novice kids, our kids who are just starting, them getting something under their belt so that they have a little bit more confidence and they understand how things work. Because even for, even for you, as a, as a veteran kid who's been here for a long time, um, <laughs> you get nervous before the first meet. Oh, yeah. You get stressed out. And so you can only imagine that those younger kids who have never done this before are very stressed out right now. Um, usually after the first meet, everybody's like, hey, I know what I'm doing now. I know how this works. I'm going to survive. We know what we're doing. <laughs> and it's usually like all smooth sailing from there. So once we get this first one under our belt, everything calms down a little bit. Absolutely. And I'm looking forward to getting to see more happy smiles instead of stressed out faces of, I don't want to talk for the first time in front of these people. Once you realize you're only talking in front of 10 other kids and a judge, you're, it gets a little bit less nerve wracking. So I always look forward to that. I also, it's my first time ever being in charge of our home tournament. So I'm excited to see how I fare and I'm excited to see how, um, where I can improve and learn. Cause I, one of my biggest goals as a coach, I think is always to get better for you guys because you guys are smart, <laughs> which sounds like a great thing, but uh, and it is a great thing, but it also means that I have to keep getting smarter, because <laughs> the smarter you get, the closer we are in caliber, and I need at least like a little gap there, so when you ask me for help, I know what to do, instead of me looking at you saying, oh, you're more intelligent than me now, good luck. <laughs> so I, I definitely enjoy the learning process and continuing to grow, so I'm excited to see what what gaps I can fill in my own skill set after this, because the only way to really find out is to do it. So Fantastic. Well, uh, 
I really appreciate this interview, Abby. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think that kind of covered as many bases as we could. The speech tournament is taking place on Saturday. Our Highlanders are going to be here at about 8 a.m. There's not a lot of spectating that happens at speech, but we appreciate your support from afar. Um, our kind of goal is to just kind of, you know, like she said, just kind of feel things out, uh, work towards the rest of our season, which is going to have some work of edge to it. So hopefully we'll get a couple updates in the future. Um, I'm also going to pitch a little bit about the art show. So the art show is tomorrow, uh, Thursday. Uh, from 5 to 7 p.m. And any community member, any parent, any grandparent, any friend of a friend of a friend who's in art, we would love to have you come and support our art students. We have, I'm just looking at some panels from this side, and there are some fantastic pieces on display. They look really good. <laughs> and that's from a speech coach's perspective. We have so many people that are in speech and are also in art. And honestly, that kind of thing is... Uh, it's very uh, beloved by a lot of our art students. That kind of thing is, you know, oh, we're getting a pan over. <laughs> this is just a preview of some of the beautiful art that you might be able to see here at the Valley City High School Art Show. <laughs> we have a couple people running out of the way there. Um, <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's going to be a good show. So VCHS is a... I do have artwork in here. So this is my last uh, kind of big art show for the... For the winter season, we're going to have another one in the spring that kind of captures once again. This is a K-12 through art show, so any student in the Valley City Public High School system that's uh, your kindergartner through your senior, me, uh, come and support them, see their art, tell them that they did a good job, tell their friends that they did a good job, because honestly, there is nothing more gratifying in the world than uh, having your community members come out and support you. So uh, our art teacher, Ms. Stephanie Kruger, and all of our art students have worked very, very hard on this, so we would appreciate your love and support. Um, yeah, so keep updates on uh, what play site is going to look like in the future. Make sure that you are keeping up with your Highliner hubbub, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Thank you so much for joining us, Abby. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs>
that well-rounded piece in there. Uh, one of the persons I wanted to talk about be- with that topic in mind is Peyton Peterson. She seems to always find open players as a very good passer. I think having the length that she does helps in that, doesn't it? Oh, yes, for sure. You know, and, and she doesn't have to play the five uh, with Brooke out there. Um, and Carly Govan comes in, plays the five as well. And when Addie's healthy, she also plays the five. So that puts Peyton Moore at that four position, which sometimes is against a little bit shorter players, which also allows her to look. But she is so long, uh, you know, arms and whatever. So when she's holding that ball up, it, it's less likely to get tipped. But she's been a really willing passer um, and getting other people set up. Uh, she kind of joked at the beginning of the season that she was going to try to break Jaden's assist record. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, her being selfless, a senior, uh, Dylan Deagle as well as moving the ball. Um, you know, when older kids are selfless or those kids that have a lot of varsity experience are selfless, it trickles down to those younger kids also being selfless. And, um, you know, Peyton's played extremely well. Um, just her, her, her basketball knowledge and her vision when she's out there and, um, you know, that's been a big plus. You mentioned uh, Govan, well, Carly and Greta, and then you have Faith Peterson off the bench, and then Sam Hatcher getting slowly but surely back into the rotation. Uh, your bench players, uh, you, you seem to really, uh, you don't lose a whole lot when you get in there. Maybe your defense, because the Govans got very active defensively, so is Faith, but your defense maybe go up a little bit, but you don't lose a whole lot with the bench. No, uh, you know, Greta, Greta brings a different a different aspect at the guard position with her height and length, and then being quick, um, you know, and, and Carly and Faith, uh, both of those guys, uh, some experience last year really helped in their length, their size. Uh, Faith's strong, you know, she's so strong, so she can guard, you know, three or four different positions. And then, uh, you know, and then they got the speed that kind of comes with it. They really, you know, those three are really good defenders. And then they're, they're capable offensive players. And, uh, you know, Greta had a pass on Saturday, maybe one of the best passes I've seen this season on a left-handed bounce pass for a backdoor layup. It was, it was phenomenal. And so, um, you know, we don't lose that, you know, we don't have that big step down with our bench, which is great. Um, you can kind of keep that intensity up and, and whatnot. So, um, you know, and then we add Sam Hatcher to our bench right now. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and and she brings a lot of experience, quickness, and, you know, and that defensive mentality and, um, you know, and, there's not much to say like they just yeah. there's no drop off really and so that's really beneficial sometimes makes it hard coaching because there is no <laughs> drop off but um it also you know if someone's got the hot hand in that position we can stick with them it's not like oh well we got to get this player back in no we can we can stick there because they can continue to run the stuff we're running a week off just like uh, the boys uh, again uh Knock on uh, wood that uh, everything goes fine. We got uh, Cheyenne here on Friday night. What do you expect out of the Mustangs? Uh, they're going to play man. I know they got a new coach uh, from um, Century. I expect that they're going to kind of bring some of that stuff there. Um, and they're going to be well coached. I know uh, I've, I know their coach a little bit and know they're going to kind of bring to the table as far as defensively. They're going to stick in their man. Uh, they're going to try to be really sound in that. And then knowing what they brought back from last year. They have a lot of shooters on the court. They're going to be able to space it. And then uh, Metcalf in the middle, she's a tough post to, to play against, and um, she's really kind of gotten a chance to blossom a little bit. Um, and I know that there's a little bit difference with the new coach, and so they're also kind of still trying to figure that out, I think, a little bit. But I think it should be a really competitive game. Uh, we got to show up, play the full 36 minutes, and give it everything we got. Um, but we know we're going to get their best shot from them as well. I want to step back to Monday night real quick. Uh, the uh, C-Squad uh, girls uh, played against Shanley, and uh, you get a lot of those eighth graders are getting a chance to play with the, the freshmen and the sophomores. Do you like that, that they're getting a chance to get on the floor, on the big floor, and playing these games to see the speed of that? Oh, for sure. And and any time they can play more basketball, it, it it's only beneficial. Uh, and we got a lot of, you know, we have 10 eighth graders out, so um, there's a lot of them. And they're talented, like they're talented kids. Um, and so it's just good for them to get more experience, more playing time. And there's a big difference between, you know, junior high and that C squad stuff, you know, junior high, a lot of times you can't press the whole time. They're always playing up home. At least they're always playing a much smaller gym. Um, and here we can press, you can play some zone, you can do some different things. So they're also seeing a lot of different things and, you know, and, and having to learn to adjust a little bit. So I think anytime we can get the kids on the court for extra time, more playing, it's just better. And so, um, 
you know, I'm really excited for that group coming up as well. Um, and as they start to mesh into our varsity and our JV and stuff. Final question now as you uh, get ready here with uh, Cheyenne. What are going to be some keys here on Friday night? Same uh, as before. Well, Do you know, just hold up last week's show? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, we put a premium on rebounding. We're trying to be really good at it. Uh, it's a work in progress. Some games were really good. Some games were not as strong. And then for us, it's really taking care of the basketball. I mean, limiting our turnovers. And we, we talked about the other day, you know, we haven't been super efficient from the three-point line. We haven't been super efficient from, uh, you know, the point blank shots, the down low inside. And um, we've been getting better at the free throw line, but at the beginning of the season, we did not start out great there. And, you know, we're struggling in all three spots to be efficient, yet we're in every single game just about. So it's just about trying to be efficient, run our offense, um, and then take care of the ball because, you know, if you're if you're not taking care of it, it's hard to be efficient at anything. So those, you know, the rebounding, the turnovers, those are always a huge, huge thing for us. And now it's just about getting more efficient in our offense, uh, taking care of uh, making the right decision and moving the ball where it needs to go and then converting when we get those opportunities. Um, and those, you know, we take care of those three things. I like our chances of that game. Yeah, I think 10 of 13 at the free throw line against uh, Shanley, uh, which I think was your best percentage of the year. Because I know last year when we talked, you said, trust us, we practice free throw shooting. <laughs> we do. It just wasn't happening. But this year it seemed like that that has turned around a little bit. Yeah, you know, the beginning of the season was rough. Um, you know, I think for a while we were like 58% as a team. Uh, we're 11 to 14 from the line on, Sh on Shanley. Okay, I missed one. Uh, yeah, well, still only three misses. <laughs> um, you know, 11 to 14, so we got there. It wasn't like you're two of three or something. You know, we got wow. there. We got those opportunities. And, you know, the kids, they're, they're putting the work in, um, and hopefully we see, you know, the benefits from that at the free throw line. And it's, it's free throws are highly important. You know, they're free points with the clock stopped. And so, um, you know, we just, if we can be more efficient there and then just get efficient from the three point line or those point blank shots, I like our chances in a lot of games that we're in. I know you think you said last year, your dad always said you got to make 200 free throws. Mom. Mom. Mom said you got to shoot 200 free throws. That was my mom's thing. And so, <laughs> you know, thank my mom for my shoot, free throw shooting percentage in my career, but um, I'll never forget, you know, that I'll never forget that. So <laughs> that's always been a big premium playing for me or, or just in basketball general with me because my mom put such a big premium on it. Well, they say 70% of our games are won at the free throw line. Yep. There is some kind of a percentage that just yep. they are won at that 15-foot strike. Yep. You know, you got to make them and you got to get there. You got to get there. That's part of it and make them is the second one. Jimmy, again, appreciate it. Again, that'll be on the road at Cheyenne here on Friday night. Uh, so they'll be on the road and then we'll talk uh, hopefully next week and then we'll we'll have a, more basketball to talk about. But again, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Go Highlanders. Appreciate it. Jimmy Howard, the head coach of the Valley City Highlander girls basketball team, will come back, wrap things up here from Coach's Corner on the Highlander Activity Network right after this. Back here on the Highlander Activity Network and Coach's Corner, wrapping up our final segment as usual is what you can uh, see and what's coming up on the Highlander Activity Network. And again, just uh, uh, an easy way of uh, watching uh, what we have on the Highlander Activity Network. Just go to highlanders.org on the home page. You'll see the little live. It says live down in the uh, tub towards the top of the screen. You click on that, and that. I like to say it takes you to a TV guide. It's got all of our channels. It's got what we have on our channels. We have different channels for every sport. We have the Go camera that uh, we have as well. And so just go to that. Go to Highlanders.org. Click on the live button. And then that will take you to a listing of all the channels. You can watch games. You can watch archive games. You can watch them live. Whatever uh, your choice. If you miss any of our coaches' corners, you can always go to the Go channel and watch the uh, past shows that we have had. And it's a great way to stay in tuned with what's going on here at Valley City with your Valley City Highlanders. So coming up here tomorrow, we've got freshman boys basketball at 615 here at the Hack, and that's against West Fargo. Doubleheader on Friday night with West Fargo Cheyenne. Again, weather permitting. We'll have JB at 545 and then 7.30 for the varsity here at Doubleheader Basketball on Friday night. And on our Go camera, we'll have gymnastics. Gymnastics will be over at the Youth Sports Complex on Friday night. I think Red River is uh, the Grand Forks uh, gymnasts will be here, but check that out. Shasta Crewalt will be on the call for you there, and uh, we'll have the basketball here, and that'll be again on the Go channel, and you can watch gymnastics tomorrow night. That gets started at 5 o'clock on Friday night. Not tomorrow night. That's Friday night at 5 o'clock. And don't forget the art show is going to be 5 to 7 here at the Highlander uh, Activity Center lobby, and 
you're seeing some of the artwork. They've got everything uh, set up here right now. And uh, that is, uh, of course, uh, art teacher Steph Kruger and uh, Maddie Clabo, our co-host tonight. She's got uh, some artwork here. So check it out. Five to seven tomorrow night here at the lobby of the Highland Activity Center. Well, that's going to wrap things up for uh, tonight's edition of Coach's Corner. My thanks to Alex Quist, Aaron Larson, Abby Ingstead, again, uh, Maddie Clabo, our uh, co-host tonight, and Jimmy Howard, and Brian Greywald, our cameraman and technical director on the show here tonight. Appreciate you joining us. We'll back again next Wednesday night, 6 o'clock, right here at the Highlander Activity Center in the lobby. It is Coach's Corner on the Highlander Activity Network.